Okay, so this first video <clears throat> is going to go over um, the S and the H steps from Schrady. I uh, just want to make sure you guys remember that you need to simplify and um, how to find your holes uh, before you begin any analysis um, or anything else with rational functions. So if I'm going to do three examples for you guys that I'm just making them up so you guys can just watch or you can copy them down or whatever you want to do. Okay. So the first thing I want to address is um, what happens if you mistakenly don't simplify and don't find the holes and you don't think there's any. Um, so what's going to happen is let's say you skip the S step, you skip the H step, and you get to the actual um, analysis steps, the R, A, and so forth, what would happen is this. You would do the R step, and you would take your numerator and set it equal to 0 and solve it. And you would get x squared is equal to 1, and so you would get x is plus or minus 1. But then when you turn around and you try to do the A step, you would take your denominator and set it equal to 0, and you would get negative 1. And so what you would see is that you got the same solution for both of these steps. Now, granted, the R step has an additional solution. It's got positive 1 and it's got negative 1. But the fact that negative 1 occurs in both steps means that your numerator is equal to 0 the same place your denominator is equal to 0. That means right now, at negative 1, you've got 0 over 0, which is a clear sign to us that we have a hole and that we forgot to do the analysis steps correctly. Okay, so if I went back to the beginning then, because that's what you would have to do, and you'd say, okay, I forgot to simplify and find my hole. So what you would do is you would factor. That's what the simplifying step is. This numerator factors as x plus 1, x minus 1. It's a difference of two squares. And there's an x plus 1 in the denominator as well. And so you have the x plus 1 cancels. And so your simplified equation is this. So the S step would tell you that your new equation, your simplified equation, is y equals x minus 1. And so 99% of your graph is going to be the line, y equals x minus 1. But you're going to have a hole on that line. And there's two things that you need to know how to find for that hole. The first is you need to know how to find the x-coordinate. And the hole is where the vertical asymptote would have been. Okay, Because, of course, we were able to cancel the vertical asymptote out of our equation. And so at negative 1, that x value that would have made that denominator 0, that's where the hole is going to be. But remember, a hole is an open circle. It's an actual point. And in order to plot that point, whether it's a solid dot or an open circle, you have to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So to find the y-coordinate for that hole, you would take the x-coordinate and plug it into the simplified equation. And so when you plug negative 1 into your simplified equation, you get a y-coordinate of negative 2. Okay, and then because this equation actually did simplify to just become a line, you don't actually, in this case, you would not do the rest of the Rady steps because it's no longer rational, and so the rest of its behavior is not going to behave as a rational function. Okay, the second example that I want to give you guys is y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x and over x plus 2. And there's nothing particularly new about this example. I just wanted to remind you guys that um, when you are factoring an equation, you always want to start by pulling out your greatest common factor. And in this case, the numerator has a greatest common factor of x. So you would pull the x out, and it would become x squared plus 3x plus 2, still over x plus 2 for right now. And then that quadratic would then factor as x plus 2, x plus 1. 
and so now the x plus 2's will cancel. And so your simplified equation becomes just a quadratic. It's x times x plus 1. If you want to, you could write that as x squared plus x. So either one of these would work as the simplified equation. Um, but then finding the whole, remember that the x-coordinate for the whole would be where that vertical asymptote would have been. So the x-coordinate for the whole would be at negative 2. And then we would take that x-coordinate and plug it into either version of our simplified equation to get the y-coordinate. I personally like the factored form. Um, so I would plug negative 2 in into both places, and so I would have negative 2 times negative 1, and so I would get positive 2 as the y-coordinate for the whole, okay? But just remember that the greatest common factor uh, may not be a variable. Um, so if I gave you guys the final example, if I said y equals 3x squared minus 15x plus 18, over x minus 3, uh, the first thing you would want to do in that numerator is everything in that numerator has a 3 that can factor out of it. So don't think you don't have to do the swing method or grouping or anything difficult or funky to factor this quadratic. When you pull the greatest common factor of 3 out, it leaves you with just x squared minus 5x plus 6. And so it becomes a quadratic with a leading coefficient of 1, and so that makes it substantially easier to factor it. Um, it does just factor as x minus 2, x minus 3. And so this time around, the x minus 3s will cancel. Our simplified equation does just become a line again. Um, and so... Once again, if we were actually doing all of the Schrady steps, we would stop once we've done the S and the H because this is no longer rational. So we would not need to do any of the other Schrady steps. Um, but we do need to still find the whole. Um, the X coordinate for the whole would be where this vertical asymptote would have been. And that vertical asymptote would have been at 3. And then when we plug 3 into our now simplified equation, we just get 3 times 1, and so we get a y-coordinate that's also 3, okay? So I just wanted to remind you guys about um, those steps as you prepare to take your quiz soon.